What is up, No Nation? It's the guys from Plant the Spear. Thank you for tuning in for another episode. We got some football talk today, Michael. We actually got a, sh a full show of football news about to talk about here. I'm telling you, we've been kind of just scratching around looking for things to talk about. But we have, first up, Florida State has officially announced the spring showcase date. Now, this is something that has been, you know, we've known about this date. It's been assumed right. that it's been on April 20th uh, for some time. But now it has been made official April the 20th at 4 p.m. inside Dope Campbell Stadium. I know there was some questions about that with the renovations and everything, but they are still going to hold it there. And yes. we, now that we know the date and the time, I want to pass on a little bit of information that's going to be useful to you guys. Tickets and parking. Here's the thing. With them going under construction and, and all this stuff that's going on right now, it's going to be limited capacity for 2024. So Seminole boosters, current 2024 boosters, you are able to go in and get tickets and parking on Monday, March 11th, starting at noon. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sure they're going to send an email if you're a booster. You know, they, they keep you up to speed there. If you are a, not a booster currently, you will get your chance to buy them the following day, Tuesday, March the 12th at 9 a.m. So with limited capacity, make sure you get on those tickets and parking because yeah. you don't want to miss it. There's a lot of new faces that you're going to want to see right. at this spring game. And I'm going to be there personally. I know you have a, a previous engagement you're going to be tied up with. But it's going to be our first chance to get a look at some of these new faces. I can't wait to see the the wide receivers, their timing yeah. with DJU. I can't wait to see some of these new defensive backs that we have and some of these new defensive linemen. There's a lot to see in this spring game. Also, in that same vein, March the 19th is when spring practice kicks off. So that is That's going to right. be something to start keeping our eye on. We're going to have some things to be able to finally talk about with football. It, you know, it's. It feels like it's getting closer already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then after the spring, we got that long period. But man, I'm excited about the spring game coming up. I'll let you share some thoughts on it. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. I wish I could be there. I, like you said, I have a previous engagement, but I know it's going to be great, you know, regardless of the renovations and how that stuff's going to go. Uh, Florida State always usually does a really good job for the, uh, for the spring showcase. And I wonder, you know, Jesse, if they're going to let people on the field, that's always my favorite part about the spring right. game is, yeah. is afterwards they let you get on the field and you kind of get the, you know, little dream of being a Florida State Seminole right. on the field there is fun. But like you said, I, I'm excited to watch from, from TV, the showcase, because we're going to get to see a lot of new faces with Malik Benson and Rody, uh, Rody Williams and all, and um, a lot of those de new defensive players that are coming in, but also not just the new faces that are coming in, but Jesse, this is going to be an opportunity for us to see who might be thinking about on the leaving, you know, yeah, that's a good depending point. on, depending on what run they get in the spring game, how much they show or how much they struggle will give us somewhat of an indication. Now you always have a surprise or two, but it will give us somewhat of the indication of who might be thinking about leaving, who might the coaches might be trying to, you know, yeah. gently push out the door. Um, and so I think the spring game is going to reveal a lot for us as we gear into the upcoming football season. Yeah, and I think you make a good point. And I do want to say real quick, for those of you who will not be able to be in attendance, it is usually streamed or televised yes. somewhere along the, the lines of ACC Network, ESPN app, something like that. That has right. not been released yet. When it gets closer, we'll update you on that. But you make a good point. I mean, this could be... Now, of course, there's usually always in the spring game some guys that don't participate for health Correct. reasons and risk right. reasons. But you make a good point. There could be a little bit of take it on down the road in the spring game yeah. where you see some guys who aren't necessarily in the plans. I just hope yeah. this year that it goes a little smoother and we don't start out with like a bunch of two point conversion Drills. attempts. Oh, that, gosh. that was crazy. But, you know, at the same time, this is pretty much just a glorified practice for them. Yeah. It's just a, yeah. a, a chance for the fans to get to watch the players in action. And of course, I mean, you got DJU, you got Brock Glenn right. in year two. Right. There, there's a quarterback battle because from what people say, man, this is not just like DJ you coming in and, and taking the reins and moving yeah. on. I mean, Brock Glenn's a talented player who has a year of experience in the system and he's going to be fighting for a starting role. So, and it's good for him. It's good for right. him to, to, it's good for Mike Norvell and Tony Toker as and Alex Atkins to, to make this a, a as fair of a competition as they right. possibly can, because you want to see the best of, of Brock Glenn come out. You want to see that competitive this. You want to see him fight for that number one position, even though you have DJU and it's going to push DJU as well. Uh, right. The other thing I was going to say is, I mean, don't you kind of, and I, I get why they do it the way they do it now to protect injuries, all like that stuff. But don't you miss the days of the old spring game where it was like a legit football game. You actually got to yeah. see them in action, defense versus offense. Uh, I do lament that 
what we've gone to is is yeah. a glorified practice. But um, but I I, th I still think it's good. I still think you're going to be able to see you know the athletes come out and shine. You're going to be able to kind of see. Uh, the position battles that have been going on throughout the spring uh, practice season, you're going to be able to kind of see like who's who's stepping up, who's kind of falling behind. It's going to kind of help you formalize what you believe about this team headed into the season. Right. And that's a great point. And uh, that's why they don't even call it spring games anymore. Now yeah. it's just showcases. But I think you make a good point, too. And, and that's why we've been talking about doing a lot of position group previews and yes. things like that. But we're honestly, guys, we're just waiting until after the spring because there's so many new pieces so that many. we want to see what they do in Garnet and Gold. We want to see yep. how that second portal period shakes out. Yep. But it's going to be a, a good opportunity to take a look at that. And yeah, when you talk about the quarterback battle, I mean, we all pretty much know DJU should be your starter. But like you said, just having that that push from another guy who's a quality yeah. quarterback. And I'm also excited to see Luke Cromanhawk. I mean, he's a yeah. early enrollee, so he should be you know up to speed enough to get out there and sling it around a little bit. So that's going to be fun. Um, like I said, guys, I will be there. Don't really have any plans yet, but you know, we'll figure something out and let you guys know um how to get in touch once we get all that stuff sorted out. But while you're in Tallahassee, Michael, there is one thing. Now, I've got to say with the spring game, my biggest disappointment is every year all we ask is just have this on a weekend where there's yes. a home baseball series. And oh once again, gosh. they missed the mark on that. So that's my biggest complaint. But one thing that I will never complain about in Tallahassee, that is today's sponsor, Alumni Hall. Let's FSU. go. If you're going to that spring game, make sure you stop by their new location at 1415 Timber Lane Road and load up on some new FSU gear. I know I'm going to swing by there and pick up some new stuff for the spring game. Now, the next topic I want to roll into, Michael, here is something, man, Florida State just keeps on, <laughs> you know, and, and the, actually, hopefully the title of this episode comes out like we said, but it's Florida State takes the combine by storms because this storms. is a this is a tip of the cap to Josh Storms and, you know, the strength and conditioning staff at Florida State and what they've been able to do with this team. I mean, these guys, one, let's rewind it to the regular season. There was times late in the game, fourth quarter. Now, I know a lot of this had to do with the rotation, but right. the strength and, and the conditioning that they have, yeah, they're pushing people around in the second half. Gosh. You've heard on multiple occasions these transfers that come in and go through the tour duty and the workouts and all that stuff, and they say Florida State pushes them harder than than Absolutely. their previous program. And some of those programs are Alabama and LSU and you know these top tier programs. And so I think it is a testament to what you've seen that strength and conditioning staff do with this roster, and that really rolled over into the combine. When you look yes. at what this team was able to do, now I think the one thing that stood out above all else was the speed that this team oh had from gosh. top to bottom. Now, there's some guys that really went in here and made themselves some money. Some money. And when you look even back to the, the Senior Bowl and the uh, Shrine Bowl as well, those were two more postseason events where Florida yep. State just showed you that I hate to go back to kicking the dead horse again, Michael, but <laughs> at the same time, it goes to show you that that narrative where Florida State was just one guy, and once he got hurt, the rest of the mm. team didn't have a chance, that that was a load. And this just shows, man, when you look at what they did in the Senior Bowl, what they did in the Combine, the way they showed out, that – this was a really good team, Absolutely. not 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 a good Jordan Travis and a supporting cast. It was everybody. Right. Now Jordan Travis is special, right. so I don't yes. I don't want to take that away from him. But the the speed that this team had, especially the defense, and I'll just go through Gosh. a couple of quick numbers here. Trey Benson four three nine forty was uh, third of the running back groups. Now Johnny Wilson ran a four five two, but I mean, guy's huge, so you don't expect him to really right. run right. super fast. I will say. I saw somewhere that said he had the largest wingspan in combine yes. history. In combine history. That dude is no one, freak. no one has had a bigger wingspan. Like they they were talking about, I didn't watch the combine, but I watched like the, the talk shows afterwards. Right. They were talking about his radius of catch is unheard of. Like what basically what that means is like you could pretty much within his radius of catch, you could pretty much miss the throw. And as long as you get it in a and in, in the widest radius of catch in NFL history, he has the ability to catch that ball. That's wild. I know. I mean, just a just a physical freak. And so I, I think he was definitely grateful for his time in Tallahassee and yeah. to be able to develop. And, and he definitely uh, is looking good as far as the measurables go. And to be honest, guys, here's the thing, because the next one I'm going to get into, we got to talk in two different ways about this. And that's with Keon Coleman. Now, he ran a 4640, did not do himself any favors with that number. But here's on the flip side of things. 
he had a really good mile per hour number in the gauntlet drill. And yes. He, you know, as much as 40 times are fun to talk about, oh, they're great. You know, Xavier Worthy ran a 4-2-1 fastest in history. All that's great. A lot of the 40 time has to do with technique, whether you, know, you get out of your stance fast enough. There's, you know, it's, that's track speed. And, yeah. and at the same time, looking at game speed is totally different. It's and totally so that's different. why when you see, like, there was a an overlay. And I love how they do this in, in the yeah. combine stuff now where they overlay, like, two guys or two players yep. and they show where you're at. And yeah, like, I saw weapon. that. Yeah. Those are really cool. But there was one guy, and I forget the receiver's name, but he ran pretty much a significantly faster 40 than Keon Coleman. But Keon Coleman was five miles per hour faster, faster. in the gauntlet drill. So, again, those who say that he doesn't have – the speed, it may not be straight line track speed, but he has enough speed in game to get that separation. And we've seen that. We've seen that on yeah. the punt returns. We've seen that from a wide receiver position. Yeah. I, I, you know, honestly, like I love, I love the 40 yard. I love like knowing what the speed of players are. And it's great that they can run, you know, I mean, Jerry Jones run a uh, four, three, eight, like th that's pretty fast. The yeah. Xavier worthy kid fastest, you know, uh, 40 uh, in NFL history, but put some pads on that bro. And let's see how fast he is running right. through traffic. Let's see how fast he is. Like what I care about in a wide receiver. And honestly, what a lot of these NFL GMs and scouting departments, what they more care about is, yes, they want to know how fast you are. They want to know how fast you are in traffic. They want to know how fast you are catching the ball. Like that gauntlet drill that he ran where he's running on average 20 miles an hour and the way he was able to catch the ball, there was no bobbling. There was no juggling. It was just in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Like that is what's going to catch those uh, NFL GMs eyes. The, the steadiness, the consistency, and the freak of nature that he is, doesn't matter that he can't run a four two. It matters that he ran a four six in traffic with that ball. He's probably going to get you a touchdown, or he's probably going to go up and get you a catch that no one else could. That's why you draft the Keon Coleman in the first round because you're looking for that consistency. Exactly, and I think you're going to see that play out in the draft. Where I mean, again, a forty time, it's all in technique. Right. You know, I, especially when you look at Trey Benson too. I mean, even four three nine, he kind of he tweeted out that like he had the had more gas in the tank, so to right. speak, that it could have been a little better. And when you talk about Trey Benson, this is another guy that's made some money in, in the yes, postseason. When you look at just the size and, and the power and the speed that he has, and I've tweeted this out the other day, and, and I still call it tweet because x out would, would sound weird it's or weird. posted or whatever <laughs> you're supposed to say, but I still call it tweeted out. But I tweeted out something the other day about him where in 2022, his first season at Florida State, he was top three in the power five of missed tackles forced per PFF, even though he had over 90 less carries than anyone else in the top five. So that shows you his power. We know about his power. Then you look at his speed. In 2023, yeah. they had put out that he was the only player to reach 21 miles per hour on three different plays throughout the season. So, I mean, that that speed, power, and size combination, again, you're running a 4 three, yeah. 40, man. I mean, like, I I feel like people are getting faster nowadays, too. I remember back in the day when, like, it felt like 4-4 four, four was cooking. Now, right. I was a lineman in high school, so, I mean, I, I broke 4-9 once, and, and I don't know if the stopwatch was broken or not, but because you know, <laughs> it probably – I wasn't moving that fast. But nowadays, I'm not running from anything you're unless cooking. it's facing me, and it better be yeah. bigger than me. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but looking further on down the line, Jaheim Bell still four yeah. six one. Now again, he's a, tight ends aren't going to be moving that fast, but he right, was third right. out of the tight end group, so top three. And this is the narrative. Just when you go down these, you look at where they performed relative to the competition. You look at uh, he also got third in the broad jump of the tight end group. Jared Verse another great performance here in the combine, fourth in the forty at four five eight, fourth in the DN group. Now. Michael, imagine this now. You got a guy who's six foot four, 260 pounds, running a four, five, 40, chasing you. And if My he's angry, gosh. like, that's scary, man. That, again, that like is... I said, I, I'm not running from unless something's chasing me and it better be bigger than me. Well, yeah, he's bigger than me. I'm, I'm running with everything I got of a guy like Jared versus chasing me. That's huge. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to lay down and play dead and hope you don't kill Go me. Go ahead and get me. <laughs> right. So it's like, that's why I don't blame like Tom Brady for not taking sacks coming, you know, in the NFL. He exactly. just falls down like, yeah, I would, too, if you saw that coming around the corner at you. But verse also finished tied for second in the broad jump, third in shuttle and first in bench press. So, again, I mean, you're talking about just the, the strength and conditioning numbers speak for themselves. Now, I was going to talk about Braden Fisk, but I'm going to save him for last because that dude. 
He has made himself Whew. the most money, money of the money. postseason. So we're going to talk about him next. But Kalen Deloach also with a 4-4-7, second out of the linebacker group. Now, we knew Kalen Deloach could fly. He's a missile yeah. around the field. Yes. And I think he's done himself a lot of favors as well this postseason. Yeah. So I'm excited to see where he can go. Jerry and Jones was a star of the combine as well. Yep. 4 3 8 40 Fifth out of the cornerback group, he had uh, you know good measurables. He had uh, good performance as some of the other ones. But let's talk about Braden Fisk, man. Goodness yeah. gracious! First out of, now, of course, they break them down into position groups. D tackles don't go against DN. So out of the D tackles, and you had some really talented names there. First in the forty, first in the vertical, first in the broad jump, first in the shuttle, and fifth in bench press. Not only that, but he was the star of I think it was the Shrine Bowl that he was in, yes. or the Senior Bowl, one of the two. The star there had a dominant performance in the ACC championship game. I mean, Braden Fisk has put himself on the map. It would not surprise me to see him be like a, a at least a day one, day two pick because yes. of what he's done just in this postseason. And, you know, I, I'll share some thoughts on, on something real quick, then I'll kick it to you and let you talk about Braden Fisk. But one other thing that I really liked was a lot of the interviews that the players yeah. did. And they talked about how they love their time at Florida State, what they did, the standard that they hold there. You know, it, it's not a surprise why they did what they did because of the work right. that they put in at Florida State. And they shouted out the, the strength and conditioning staff as well. They shouted out Mike Norvell and all the things yeah. that they put in place. There was a couple of comments about how they, they you know, they wish they had hindsight maybe played in the bowl game. Yep. I mean, it's water under the bridge now. It would have been nice to see those guys play. I think when yeah. you see the postseason numbers, you see what these guys did in the combine, top threes, top fives of teams that were in the playoffs. I mean, you have no question that they would have competed. And oh, yeah. I also think that when you see this, as much as you wanted them to play in that game, the fact that they were able to get healthy, the fact that they yep. were able to prepare, and the fact that now they've all really done well in the postseason competition, you can understand why they didn't play. And, yep. and, and yeah. you know, I heard Fabian Lovett say in an interview um, on another outlet where he he was like, you know, they, they felt like they did everything they could to prove yep. who they were. Going yep. and playing in that game, wouldn't have proved anything, anything yeah. else. It wouldn't have got them a trophy, but you know, maybe they wish they'd have played in it now, now that hindsight's 2020, but it is what it is. But man, just the, I think overall, when you look at what Braden Fist did, Jerry on Jones, all these guys, what they did in the postseason in the combine, and it just speaks to the strength and conditioning staff and, and the standard that they hold at Florida state yeah. with getting these players ready. Yeah. Yeah. And I get the argument. I mean, like, you know, I, I think two things can be true at the same time, right? That, that they proved everything they could have during the regular season. They went 13 0. They won the ACC championship. They dominated. A defense dominated on most nights. Uh, you know, we had an electric offense before the Northern Alabama game. Like all those things can be true. And at the same time, yeah, I'm sure they have some regrets of not being able to play and 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 go out there and fight with their brothers, you know, that they've been fighting through the season with all the year. I think it is what it is. And, 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 I, yeah. and it's easy to look back on hindsight and say, yeah, you wish you would have. And, and of course the fans wish you would have as well too, but also the fans also understand exactly why you did it. And so, yeah. um, and, and then, like you said, like, look at what they were able to do because they didn't play that game. They were able to get healthy because we know, I mean, especially us who've been in the media, like we we've watched how this, these injuries have piled up and people gutted through it. I mean, gosh, uh, you know, you think about Maurice Smith, the center who yeah. was basically needing help to get off the field after every offensive series, because he was, he was barely able to play. I mean, you know, every, every star player went through a bout of injury somewhere, some way. And so to, to have that ability to get well, to get rested, because this is their future to go out there and shine. I mean, you think, I mean, and then just Braden Fisk as well. I mean, who played in all those, you know, those games, except for the Georgia game. I mean, he was just dominating. The, yeah. the ACC championship, the Florida game, him and Jared verse alone basically won us those games. Like, I mean, just incredible. Uh, and what I loved about this year's combine is they introduced, or at least I just started paying attention to this year's combine again. Uh, Cause you know, I, there was, there we was haven't had a reason years. to there for a that's while. Right. Yeah, that's right. And so, but they introduced the the RAS system, the RAS, the relative yes, yes, athletic yes. system, which I thought is so cool. And I just want to highlight for, for, uh, for, Brandon Braden Fist is he graded at a 9.92. Okay. It, and it's out of 10. So the grading scale is out of 10. He graded at a 9.92. Now, 
historically, this is what's so cool about this system. It measures players from each position historically, okay? And Braden Fiss was 14 out of 1,620 D tackles from 1987 to 2024. Bro, we literally had the 14th best RAS player in the history of the NFL on our team who came from a no-name school right? playing for us. Like, again, College Football Invitational Committee, this team was greater than the sum of one player. Like, the dude is 14th. I mean, he had elite speed score. He had elite explosive game, and he had good size grade. Like, oh, my. This guy was on our team, and we got to see it against Louisville. We got to see it against Florida. Yeah. I mean, the Louisville game is the Braden Fist game. He oh, dominated yeah, that game, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, too, man, when, like when you talk about all this, you know, the committee somewhere has got to be like, man, we – we effed up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we messed right, I that let, up. I almost let one slip there. Uh, we messed that up, but I'm or they're having an evil, you know, Mr. Evil laugh somewhere, like ha 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 ha. ha. We <laughs> ah, know they were the best, and we them. screwed them anyway, right? So, I, I mean, it is kind of like a you know, a stab and twist, a salt on the wound type of deal, yeah. but at the same time, like, man, I really like Braden Fisk became one of my favorite players towards the end of the season. <laughs> Yes. Just the domination that he had. And again, I think that shows now he was highly coveted in the portal because he was extremely productive at Western Michigan. Right. But that also in itself speaks to the valuation that the staff yeah. has. I mean, they were on him early. They were able to get him in here. Yep. You know, he had a was coming off a of surgery as well. And for what it's worth, he was going to play in the Orange Bowl, but they said he had some medical stuff that he That's was trying right. to get cleaned up and, and maybe, you know, a couple more days or a week would have made the difference, but he was unable to participate. But he was in Miami. He wanted to right. go. And, you know, I know it hurts all those guys' heart. I, I know they yeah. have to, to hate watching their brothers go out there and, and take that whooping like that. But, again, you know, I, I hate to use the example of someone getting injured, but, you know, Will Shipley didn't get to go to the combine. That's right. That's because right. Because he had a season ending injury in a bowl game against what Kentucky or something Kentucky. like that. That, yep. that didn't mean anything. So, you know, I get it, man. We we are people are quick to judge, but we also don't have the opportunity to have that NFL money, that that generational right. wealth money. Right. And you know, look at Braden Fisk, perfect example. A guy who would have probably been pushing it injured to to compete in that orange bowl now had the opportunity to not take that risk, get himself healthy and go out and, and you know, perform well at the combine and the postseason, and will probably do well in the draft. Right. And I mean, that's going to help you in recruiting too. So like the benefits will still be there and everybody knows, I think now everybody knows that you've seen all these performances. Everybody's like, yeah, Florida yep. state got screwed. It kind of makes you have to admit that. But again, I just think that it is, it's exciting to see how many athletes come out of Florida state and how they're performing in these postseason events and things like that. Like you said, I mean, you got one of the best combine defensive tackles ever. And, yeah. you know, or since the, since they started the combine. And again, that was a guy that you had that you got from the portal from, like you said, a, a kind of a no nothing school in Western Michigan. Yeah. So it just makes you start wondering like, who's this Grady Kelly guy? Who's this, who's this Dura Jaya guy from West Virginia? Like right. this, this staff has an eye for talent and, and we know that. Uh, even Jerry on Jones. I mean, that's a yep. guy that they took from Mississippi State who was kind of a, you know, a, a who was it at the time? And and he showed right. out Trey Benson, a guy Trey who Benson. was coming off a knee surgery that everybody's like, you guys, you are bonehead. What are you doing? Yeah. Taking a guy with coming with off one, a two, not one, right. two. Like he's got one leg. What are you doing? And then he turns himself into, you know, a, a all ACC type of guy and a guy who's going to go in the NFL draft. So, man, it just not only does it speak, I think, to the, the evaluation uh, capabilities of the of the staff, but the strength and conditioning program that we have at Florida State now where, you know, there was for a while there, Michael, there, like we kind of waned off a little bit. And then there was a time, I think it was like 2012, maybe 2013, where you just saw the team on the field and you were like, we're big. Like we oh, look oh. like we belong. We some dogs now. <laughs> exactly. We, we ain't no puppies. We, we no puppies. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> in the famous words of, of Jameis Winston, but that's right. You know, like there for a while when when you had Trickett here and like we were recruiting yeah. kind of those smaller, faster offensive yeah. linemen, and, and some of the strength and conditioning wasn't there, and you you didn't really see it in in ACC play. But if you that's got right. up against an Alabama or something, you noticed the size difference, and now you're starting right. to see like that that offensive line last year. I mean, those Get guys bigger. are massive, and, yeah. and so 
just seeing the the size and the conditioning of these yeah. players going forward, man, it makes me excited for the future because absolutely, you know, that strength and conditioning staff is still there, and I think we have by far one of the best in the country. So again, if not the best, right? If not the best, yeah. So and I just want to, I, I real quick, I just want to give this like because we were talking about the RAS system, Trey Benson. Oh my goodness, he he was nine point seven eight out of ten again. He is fortieth of 1,745 running backs from 1987 to 2004. 40th. That's just crazy, man. This I guy had two knee surgeries, got cast aside by, by Mario, can't win a knee game, uh, crystal ball down and scum you, and we turn him into basically one of the greatest top 40, uh, at least testing, athletic testing uh, in the history of the NFL. Exactly. And, and even then, I mean, this was a guy that still put up over 900 yards in consecutive yep. seasons while splitting carries with a bunch of guys. I mean, like I said, Absolutely. With, the, with the missed tackles, you look Gosh. back at what I mentioned earlier in, in 2022, when he was top five in all of power five and missed tackles forced, he had 94 less carries Gosh. than anyone else in the top five. So, you know, but again, that also helps keep them fresh and, and they right. were able to rotate out. But man, I mean, again, that's just the eye for talent I, because you mentioned it. I mean, either Cristobal didn't take him or he didn't want to follow him because he didn't feel right. like that was the direction to go. And he came right. to Florida state and said, and it paid off for really both of us. That was a mutual yeah. agreement. Thank you. And I will say one more thing too, about, about this, because I think this is a great example of why the portal is so exciting when you have a staff that utilizes it well, because this yep. is the, this is like the epitome of what the portal yep. exists for. You went to another school, maybe the opportunity wasn't that great or whatnot. That's right. But then you come to a new school, and and this is why, honestly, like people are neither here or there on the portal. I love the portal because it comes I with less, too. comes with less drama than That's high right. school recruiting. Like you basically go in, and, and I had a chance at ACC Media Days last year to um, interview Matt Lee, the center from Miami. Now, granted, yeah. he's a hurricane, but that, neither here nor there. Um, super nice guy. Had a conversation with him about. The second time around, what do you do the second time around? What do you look for? And, you know, it's kind of a, like you look for the relationships. You look for the people there. What can I do for you? And what can you do for me? I don't oh, need to good. sit in a Lamborghini on the field. I don't need yeah. to take photo shoots galore. Right. How can I help you win? And how can you help me get to the NFL? And that's that, right. what you're seeing from Florida State right now. You're seeing them be able to bring guys in from the portal who maybe are big names. Most of them are not. That's most right. of them are unproven. You know, most of them may have been cast aside or not produced well yep. at, at other programs. They come here, they become all ACC performers. They put themselves on draft boards. Jermaine yep. Johnson yep. is another great example of that. Oh, yeah. First will be an example yep. of that. You have all these guys. And when you can start to show that, because again, we've talked about this a hundred times, really the NFL draft picks are the one thing that they've kind of been lagging on right. uh, getting that out there. So now, if you have six, eight, ten, maybe more guys drafted or put in the league, right? You're gonna you're gonna see that not only help with high school recruits because you have Kalen Deloach, that's a homegrown guy. You have you know a couple of other guys there uh, that are that are homegrown guys, but most of these were transfers, and so now yep. again, that's gonna help you be a a you know a, still remain a home run hitter in the transfer portal because they're already a home run hitter, absolutely. Uh, but, but you know you're showing now that not only can they come in. And and help your system. You can help put them with you know with Correct. their goals in the future too. Absolutely. Like I, if I'm Mike Norvell, <laughs> if I'm Mike Norvell, like depending on where everybody gets drafted, the moment everybody gets drafted, literally, I'm I'm compiling a graphic. I'm getting it out there. Yep. Like this is what their draft status was before they got to Florida State. Like this is some were basically undraftable, some were you know way low down, and this is what actually happened after development and and playing at Florida State. Like. We not only develop high school talent, we develop transfer talent. If you want to be developed, this is a place for playmakers, no matter right. what position yep. you play, right? Like, let's get that moniker out. Like, we've over the last couple of years, I feel like we've 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 like diminished that part. But when Mike Norvell first got here, his opening press conference was all about. Man, this is an offense. This is a team built for playmakers. I was telling you last night, uh, uh, we were talking through text message about that press conference when Florida State was 0-4 and four and 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 uh he was, you know, Mike Norrell was asked this question and he goes on this long rant. And you know, we 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 talk about like the Tebow rant, uh yeah. the plaque, yeah. like yeah. there should be a plaque on Dope Campbell State of, of yep. this rant, but he talks about it like we are we're we we want players that who are 
who are bought in, who want to make a difference, who are going to be a part of the chains, and their playmakers. Well, I mean, gosh, look what he's done in the portal. Look what he's done with high school talent. Look what he's doing. Like, these players are not just coming here and, and playing and being okay. They're being developed to future professional players, like, it, over and over. The proof is in the pudding. Like, let's get that out there, Florida State. Let's remind people that you come to Florida State to get developed for the NFL. Yeah, I totally agree, man. And and that's the thing. Like that 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 was, was his Tebow spo uh, speech and you hate to even compare it to that, but I it know. really was. And and I, I think what's exciting about that is that you just you have a guy who was he stayed committed to his process and his beliefs yep. and his that's foundation right. the entire time and now you're seeing it pay off and you know again, you look back to like I think it was 2021 I did a lot of heavy research with when, when people were kind of on the fence, whether we should keep them or not. And I was yep. like, no, man, no, 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 no. You have to look at the history. You have to look at what he did at Memphis, at Arizona right. state, at all these, the other programs, Tulsa, even when he was an assistant, you look at the production numbers that they had, it's coming. You just yeah. have to get yep. the right people, the right pieces in place. This is a team that's built for playmakers. That's right. You got no playmakers. Ain't got no playmakers. <laughs> right. So, like, once you got these guys here, and, and I, what I love so much about it is you're seeing a guy and a staff and a team and a program have success when you're taking guys that are fit and family, like they like they like to say at Florida State. They want guys who fit the system. They want guys who are good players that fit their system. And so. That's exciting to me because it hasn't always been the highest star rating guys, but now that they have the success on the field, you're starting to get the guys who also have the star ratings with it too, because we've seen in the past where again, you know, I don't, I don't want to make this to Jimbo show, but Jimbo, a lot of times was a great recruiter. When you look at star rankings, sometimes you just took the guy with the highest ranking right. and it didn't always right. pan out. Now he won a national championship, but you got so much talent, you know, I don't, maybe I could have coached that team to a national title, but oh. uh, you know, again, I mean, it's just, you look at what they've been able to do with not the most talented roster, and now right. they're starting to bring in those guys, and all this is going to help that. All of this oh. is going to help. These combine results and everything. So this is really just a big tip of the cap to what the staff has identified from the talent perspective and what they're able to do because yep. there really is that BS narrative out there that they can't yep. develop. And for some reason, people take that because they're a transfer. Like, right. You can come in as a transfer and not be – Game Absolutely. ready, not be league yeah. ready. You know, Trey Benson had six yards, I think, or yes. six carries for like 20 yards when he came here. This staff developed him. Absolutely. Well, it's like it's it, it's it, it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense that you would say that, well, you know, Florida State can't develop. These transfers can't develop. You know, humans develop at different points and stages, right? Exactly. Like, let's, let's just let's just be real about this. And so not a player coming in isn't going to be game ready, college football ready in their first season. Now, yeah, are there some truly elite freshmen? Like, do I think Jameis Winston could have started his true freshman season over EJ Manuel and probably won us a lot of games? I actually believe that because, probably. I mean, you saw what he did his redshirt freshman year. Right. But not everybody's a Jameis Winston. Not everybody's a Kelvin Benjamin. Not everybody's a Rashad Green. Not everybody is 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 it's Dalvin Cook or or right. Cam Akers. Like like those players who come in and they're ready to go. Like they were just they were destroying high school football. Not everybody's like that. Some players take time to develop. And what happens in the transfer portal world is that you go to a school, you you buy into the hype, you buy into all that, you buy into the coach, you know, like that stuff. But you get in and you start realizing like, man, the way they're developing you, the way they're teaching you, it's not producing where you want it to. Or maybe your body just isn't ready yet. So you transfer, you come to Florida State, come to Florida State. I'll say it one more time. Come to Florida State. And if you're not coaches, coming to Florida State, what is you doing? What is you doing? <laughs> Jalen Ramsey. And yep. so you come to Florida State. And then, man, these coaches, they pull it out of you. They pull the best out. They were, they were done with Johnny Wilson. At, he's the greatest case of this. They were done with Johnny Wilson at Arizona State. He was relegated to, like, being whatever. They didn't really care. I mean, the dude only had, like, what, 200-something yards and, right. and just and, – and two seasons. Look what this dude has done. Right. That is – that is coaching. That is development. He's probably going to be a top four round draft pick where before that he was undraftable. Right. And, you know, maybe he gets a look because of his size. But again, this is a guy where he thought no one was even going to attempt to, to, to take him in the trade him. 
or to right. get him transfer portal. Right. Yeah. He didn't know anyone was going to take him. And then you go from having like 230 yards to I think he had like 900 or something like that, or seven, seven or 900 in yeah. his first year. It was a lot. And, and so, yeah. like, the development was there. And you might point to quarterback play. And this is also another point to, to talk about late career development. Well, his quarterback at Arizona State I was mean, only the Heisman winning Jaden Daniels. Exactly. Uh, but he didn't win that till he got to LSU. Now, to that LSU. could be a supporting cast thing. But again, right. you don't think that they developed him a little bit there at LSU? That's right. That's the right. same as they do here. So again, I mean, it just really, to me, it just speaks to the fact that whether you're a transfer or not, they can still be developed. Now, yep. was Jared Verse good when he came to Florida State at that level? Was Jermaine Johnson good when he came to Florida State? Sure. I'm not going to say they're not, but that no. doesn't mean they can get better. And for those people who say that's not true, Jared Verse himself said he came back because he knew they could help him tweak his game to that yep. elite level. And that's so, right. you know, transfer or not, I mean, the, 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 this has been, it's hard to say this, Michael, this is a, this is the best worst off season that you could ever ask for. Like it started out just terrible, man. Hot I mean, garbage, right. Yes. Hot stinking garbage, Thank you, left, garbage. Left, left it outside on the wrong trash day in august and in, in florida and it's that's been right raccoons heat. are chilling in it Ooh, and, man oh, it's, it's rough but then after that i think what you've seen in the senior bowl portions what you've seen in the combine yeah. what you've seen yep. them be able to do in the portal because everyone everyone likes to jump on those 63 to three yeah the transfers coming in didn't care about that they know that's the deal. Right. They, they watch that's football right. they know the game they know that half of these players who are showing out in the combine weren't there. And so That's again, right. and I, I just think that, that this has been a true Testament. And, and I think in a way, I don't think the snub was good for us because it pisses me off because I think we would have mm. won a national championship. So yeah. I, I'm not going to say it was good for us, but I think going forward, just to kind of like rally the troops, circle the wagons, oh, yeah. whatever you want to do, the motivation aspect or whatnot, and all yep. these things that are, that have played out, Florida State's going to be fine, oh, yeah. you know, yep. regardless of what the invitational committee uh, decided yeah. to do. So, That's right. yeah, man, and right, and and so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna overcome it. But obviously, we had to talk about this this combine performance because, man, I think it was just huge for for this team, for this roster to show how yeah. talented they were and to yeah. kind of set the record straight. That man, yeah. as as great as Jordan Travis was, this was a this was a team of more than one person. That's right. That's right. And they would have made noise in those playoffs. And because, Absolutely. again, you had a lot of the guys from playoff teams that were testing, too, and they didn't test right. as high as Florida State players. That's right. Yeah. And I, I'm excited for uh, the NFL draft for the first time in a while. Yep. And I'm excited to see Florida State shine. I'm excited to see Florida State get its name back as a premier uh, university college football program that produces NFL type players that we're going to see over and over again. And this is only this. This NFL draft is going to be uh, like a, a, a I, the best thing I can think of is like a crowning achievement for the program. Now, yeah. for us fans, the crowning achievement is going to be winning a national title. But right. this is a step towards that um, of, of saying like, look, we are now able to produce NFL type talent. We're able to develop it from both the high school ranks and the portal ranks. This year, we're going to have much more of uh, of, of Florida State players down the draft boards and draft lines and, and universities are NFL teams calling that. And then they're already looking at, I'm, I'm seeing stuff on Twitter of uh, because of what's happening in the combine NFL scouts and, and GMs are already talking about this next crop of Florida state players that potentially yeah. could enter the draft. They're already excited about that. They're not talking about Alabama. I watched those talk shows after the combine. They weren't talking a lot about Alabama players. They weren't talking a lot about Georgia players. They weren't talking a lot about, Texas players. They definitely weren't talking about Miami players or Florida State players. You know what they were <laughs> no. talking about? I mean, Florida players. They were talking about Florida State. A lot of the talk shows were about Florida State players um, in the combine. And that's great publicity for Florida State. It's yeah. putting us. That climb is happening. So I have, I I am excited for the draft. I know these players are gonna they're gonna continue to work. They still have pro days that are gonna happen at the yeah. at Florida State. So other players who probably didn't get mentioned that didn't get invited to the combine, they're gonna get a chance to show out. So who knows, man? We could see uh, players that we're not even talking about today right. get drafted in the later rounds. Right, Akeem Dents, a name that jumps out there right. with, with those guys. And you know they did talk about Miami players a little bit. 
probably were talking about how our defensive end was faster than your safety, which was like, goodness gracious. I mean, they didn't do themselves any that favors. Was terrible. Yeah. So their, their strength and conditioning staff does not get a tip of the cap. They were probably like, get us out of here. Uh, Built but, by molasses. Right. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I just, it does speak to that. And I think you bring up an interesting point too, when you talk about who they talk about and, and just the hype around the school, because kids yeah. see that they, they pick yep. up on that stuff. They know, you know, if there's a, like, Seeing what you saw in the combine, imagine how many scouts are going to be at that pro day now That's because right. they know there's That's more right. guys there. And when you look at the Alabama situation, how it it is unfolded now, Alabama is still a great program. They have a, a wonderful foundation to build from. I don't expect them to, you know, to, to be Miami and flounder for 20 years. Right. But w there was a lot of departures and people yes, were like, was. you know, people talked about how their NIL situation wasn't the greatest and things like that. People are going to realize real quick that that Alabama's success, a lot of that was that pipeline to the NFL. They knew that Nick Saban could put yep. you in the league. Yep. And then when yep. he left, they were like, yeah, we'll be we'll, we'll be OK. I mean, it's going to be a change. Right. There's a lot of people that jump ship because they were not there for NIL. They were there nope. for that pipeline to the league. And until you that's prove right. that you can do that. And, and that's why I think if Florida State can do that then you know you get that pipeline flow going Absolutely. then you're going to get that high school talent that wants to be a part of this as well but like you said it's going to be fun to watch the draft now because you got more than like well we got that one guy you you're know right. now now it's going to be a lot you're going to dominate and That's i remember right. a few years back i think it was well, like 2012 or 2013 or 2013 draft we were talking about the other day had 12 guys and you know Ooh. it was so much fun yeah. to watch those yeah. guys you know my my computer's going to be overheating trying to keep up making graphics this year so like i'm excited about it man it's like you said, it's not it's not winning a national championship, which is what we no. want. Right. But it's still a feather in the cap of your program that, that's good for your good for the staff and, and all yep. that stuff. So, yeah, yeah man, if I'm you want to win a national championship, yep. you have to be putting players in the NFL because that right. means you have NFL type players. Exactly. And it doesn't always mean they have to be a four or five star from right. birth. But right. Again, like you said, you look at the teams that dominate the NFL draft. Now you have some some random people who will be like from Tallahassee community college that make it in. <laughs> but yeah, I agree, man, you have to, you have to produce NFL talent. And that's yep. why you see the teams, the Alabamas, the Georgias, you know, the Michigans, even of the world produce that yep. NFL talent. And, and it leads to success in the trophy room too. That's how you put trophies Absolutely. in the cabinet. And it doesn't always mean that because, you know, there's a dusty trophy cabinet down in Moral Gables that, you know, they, they, so put true. In the NFL, Gables, they, right. they love so you, their moral victories. Right. You got to know how to use the talent. But and, and that's yes. something that we've seen from the staff. They know how to use the talent. Yeah. And now it's just that's a true. matter of, you know, stacking that roster and they're doing a great that's job. Right. And like you said, this is already going to get people excited for next year, because I think that yep. 2024 roster coming up, we've talked about this on past shows. Mm -hmm. We were really we love the guys on the 2023 team, but that Absolutely. 24 roster, when you just look at a blue chip ratio perspective, it's probably more talented than the yeah. 2023 team yeah. was. And so that means that's going to translate into more draft picks going yeah. forward. Now, of course, there's no guarantee in that, but right, you know, right. you start with a, a higher floor Correct. and then you continue that development path, that's right? You're gonna get to a higher ceiling. And then, you know, this is something where I feel like now, and of course it all begins with you locking up Mike Norvell for a long term. That's right. That's to right. Keep, to keep these guys in place. But it just makes you feel like this program is gonna snowball. You've seen the success yep. on the field catch up. You've seen the recruiting catch up. Now you're gonna see the draft picks catch up. And then that's just gonna keep snowballing and getting better year over year. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that point that you that you said, like about the floor, because you you look at every team under Mike Norvell. So obviously the 2020 team had the deepest floor and a very low, low ceiling. Then yeah. the 21 team had a deep floor, but the ceiling at, once they kind of figured things out, got higher. That 22 team had a low floor and a, a, a an incredibly high ceiling. And I was looking at that 22 team going back to that three game losing streak to Clemson, Wake Forest and and NC State. And again, if you think about it, that NC State and Wake Forest game, they had chances to win the game. Yeah. They had chances yeah. to win the game at the end. Had they won it, we're talking about a team that is 12 or 11 and one going in, uh, well, probably not playing the ACC because they lost to Clemson, but at least going to a, a BCS bowl, as we called it, the New Year's Six Bowl. And yeah. we're talking about, oh my gosh, what is, what is going on? And then, of course, that 23 team. Which, is, which will forever be in our hearts because of yep. 
being undefeated because of the snub, because of how much, how likable they were, how fun they were to watch. And they had an incredible high ceiling that unfortunately got snubbed out by the college football invitational committee. And so you're, like you said, you're already starting with a very low floor and a really, really high ceiling because of the talent, because of the blue chip ratio. Like it would not surprise me if we're at the end of next season, holding a championship trophy undefeated because we're already starting with a better talent pool of players than we started the previous year. And what did we do with the previous year? Now, of course, like you said, it's going to take putting everybody together, defining roles, making sure the offense fits, making sure the defense continuity is there, coaching, all those things. We're going to need luck that goes our way. We we understand it. All of that is a factor. But it would not surprise me if – we see a better season and the only way it could get better is by winning a national title. Right. So. <laughs> right exactly. <laughs> There's not a so, lot of room, but not a lot of room for better, but we could see a better or a comparative season to this year from 2023 to 2024 because the talent level has grown. Right. And I think that's, yeah, that's a good point because I think, it's hard to say better because better means right. you won the national title. That's right, right. Uh, but you also have, you know, the, the playoffs now. So you wouldn't, you would have got in, you know, right. this year if, if hopefully there's no funny business or anything like that. But at the same time, I think too, when you look back to those three games that they lost in 2022, and this was something that I did a almost like a study on uh, at, at that time. Wake Forest. NC State and Clemson. Well, first off, the first two, because they, let's be honest, they don't send a lot of players to the right. NFL. So those first two had a lot of COVID seniors, a lot of That's right. uh, very uh, experienced players. Clemson was the same way because, you know, the, Clemson will be like, oh, first round NFL draft pick. I'm coming back for my 17th year. <laughs> what are y'all doing in there in Clemson? How do you get these guys? I mean, to come Will back? Shipley played for 20 years at Clemson. Exactly. So, I, but that was the thing was like they lost those three games to teams that were significantly more experienced than them because Florida state was a really young team in 2022. And so really when you look at, you told me yesterday, what was it like 28 and six? I think that that they've been since that 0 and 4 start. Yep. Look at those six games that even then that they lost, you, you lost to a ranked wake force that went 11 and one that year. You lost to a ranked NC state team on the road at night, which is still the game that makes my blood boil because they couldn't find a friggin' way to score two points to win the game or three mm. points to win the game. They lost by two points, even with Devin Leary out. Mm. And then anyway, and then you lost to the eventual ACC champion Clemson, right. who was also ranked. So that's that's half of them. And then the yep. fourth one was to UGA, uh, you know, another ranked team. So even then, the the games that Florida State has lost since Mike Norvell has got things to the level that they that, that kind of are now. They've been against good ranked teams. So, That's like, right. he has just really performed so, so well. And, and you know, like we talked about, just to echo your point, was now that you're starting with a higher floor yep. and you also have a higher ceiling, yep. there's no guarantee that lightning is going to strike twice no. in the same place. No. There's just not. It's hard to go undefeated. Florida's it been is. trying for 120 years and still hasn't yeah, been able never to do done it. it. Never. So, uh, ne- never in the history of ever have has Florida had an undefeated season. So, let's you keep know, reminding them of it. Smoke it. Right. Exactly. Uh, but, that's the thing. It's hard to do that. But at the same time, you look at the schedule, you look at the talent. And I saw today that that Clemson actually is the favorite to win the ACC uh, per one of the betting sites. So, you know, stack that little chip on your shoulder there because we get them at Doak this year as well. And, you, you know, you have DJU that that should be a fun matchup there as well. But, yeah, man, I think just looking at things going forward, this is another building block to getting this program Yep. to the standard that we want it to be on a continuous basis. Getting back. Yeah. I don't want to quite jump out here and use the term dynasty yet. I don't want to quite say that. Yeah, no, um, no, no. You know, there's a lot to know what's going to, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, what conference we're going to end. We don't know what That's college right. football is going to like soon. So I don't know that you'll, you'll see a dynasty ever again, like the Bowden days. Right. But I think this just shows you why this program is going to have sustained success for many years to come, because That's you're right. looking at the, the, very high level talent evaluation, the high level strength and conditioning development, the player development when they get to Florida State. And if you create that NFL pipeline, the recruiting and the portal additions are going to take off. And, and obviously the portal's not going anywhere. They're not enforcing right. any of this stuff. It's going to be free agency. You can just, you know, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. So, hey, we take advantage of it. So I guess I can't yes, be too mad will. at it. But <laughs> yeah, so it's just, I think it's all good, man. It's positive to see, again, as painful as the Orange Bowl was, I'm happy to see these guys be able to chase their dreams and do it at a high level. And a lot of guys 
really did improve their draft stock. So I can't yeah. wait for the draft to come up and watch them. Yeah. But, you know, that's we're pretty much going to round it out today with that, guys. We just wanted to talk about the combine and keep in mind, like I said, the spring showcase has been announced. If you guys are interested in going April 20th at 4 p.m. inside Doak Campbell Stadium, the being renovated Doak Campbell Stadium, it'll be your first chance to get a look at Doak. And it's, you know, that's you right. might shed a little weird. tear. <laughs> right, you might sh you might shed a tear when you see what happens uh, to it. You know, I might go dump a, a a little bit of sweet tea or something out where my seats used to be, but you know, it is what it is. So uh, yeah. it's going to be fun, though, man. I can't wait to see a lot of these new faces and and how they perform in the spring. But that'll be that'll be exciting, and it's coming up before you know it. It's going to be here in a very short Absolutely. amount of time. So mark your calendars for that. And uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for uh, supporting those that support us, Alumni Hall FSU. If you've watched this long, drop a like and subscribe. Let us know yes. what you're excited about to see in the spring game. Uh, let us know who was your, your favorite combine performance in the comments. Let's see what you guys think about it. So with that being said, Michael, thank you so much for joining me. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. As always, go Knowles. Go Knowles.